Becky? Something you may want to do in a minute is uh, after you get rid of the shared screen, you can spotlight a video. And because Chef Nicole is talking in a different place, you'll want to spotlight her other video so that it doesn't record the gray box. We are live. Leah said with this headset on, sometimes she feels like I'm ground control at an airport and I'm like operating. Okay, now you can land over here and land over here. And now I'm showing that somebody's recording already. Leah has already started recording. It may have started recording to the cloud on as soon time. as the glass started. Okay, perfect. And then when I stop sharing, where do I spotlight her? Um, if you do the grid view, the gallery view, you'll see three dots in the corner and you can um, on Chef Nicole. It from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's our video. visual. Okay. Everybody else is leaving their camera off this afternoon. Oh, I need the black. Oh, good. There's James. There's Sandra. I can see some people now. Or not James. Still can't see James. Hi, Sandra. I think the storm is past my house. It's done thundering. How long was your electricity out? About 30 seconds, long enough for the microwave and the stove to totally go back to 12 o'clock. <laughs> and for me to have to wait for the internet to come back on. Just long enough for those inconveniences. <laughs> but I'm glad it didn't go out for longer because it is humid outside and when the air's not running, you can tell it starts to build up humidity in the house. And... Yep, it's totally past us now on my little radar. Yay! Is it heading to Little Rock? <laughs> no, it's heading over to BB. Okay. So it's not moving south, it's moving east. Oh, yeah, we don't have a class. Nicole. Mm -hmm. She's off screen gathering some things, I think. There we go. I forgot to put on makeup today. We can't tell. It's okay. Yeah, I figure the, the, the picture quality can't be good enough that you can tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sandra's cat wants to say hi. Oh, it's a little <laughs> kitten. It's so little. Sandra, do you unmute yourself? What's its name? This is Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hello. That's my dog's name. Well, my dog's <laughs> named Charlie Brown. So. There you oh, go. Sandra, Sandra, we had dogs, Charlie Brown and Lucy. <laughs> oh, what a cute, precious tabby. She's Jesus. still at that frisky age. Right. She That's no fun. Thought. <laughs> it's no fun when you're asleep and they're on the bed with you and all of a sudden they attack right. your feet right. <laughs> yeah. there's Kathy hi Kathy hey girl how are you another day another week here Something. we are <laughs> well, here all we are now. <laughs> here's Ann Good morning, Ann, or good afternoon, afternoon. I guess. <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> it's funny when I used to answer the phone all the time, I would come home and still answer the phone the way I had at work. And it'd be the same thing, you know. And when you get into a habit of saying good morning, you start saying that all the time. 
So no matter what time of day or night it is. Good morning. Hi. My daughter doesn't like it because I always hang up the phone by going bye-bye. <laughs> no matter who I'm talking to. Bye-bye. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Dentist, kids. Well, if you really want to confuse someone, be named Ann Morning. So I call on the telephone and I'll say, <laughs> good morning. This is Ann Morning. <laughs> people get very confused. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. probably think it's a prank phone call. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say the other day we were practicing with an instructor and um, Gina and I were on and he goes, all right, thanks. Love y'all. <laughs> it's like, you can tell that he's just used to always when he says goodbye, <laughs> love you. It's like, so I called her back and I'm like, did you just hear this stranger say love you to us? <laughs> Was it just me? It just makes you feel good though, so it's okay. That's right. <laughs> we could do worse. That's, That's right. right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Leah, it's three o'clock. Do you want to do the introductions? Yeah, do we want to start? Myself. Ask start. the chef. Is she ready? Yeah, I was going to say stop sharing your screen <laughs> and then we'll see. She's left the screen, so I don't know if she's ready. Okay. There she is. Hi, Chef. How are you? Hello. This is Chef Nicole. Hi. Um, I want to make sure I can hear you. Say some, Say hello to us. Hello? Oh, yep, I can. Good deal. Well, we're glad to have you back. This is Arkansas's Heart Hospital with us today as a sponsor of LifeQuest. We are particularly thrilled to have you back. We loved what you shared the last time. Your recipes are on our website under your class description. So if y'all will look on Mondays on the LifeQuest of Arkansas website, you can see the video recording of Chef Nicole's demonstration from last week along with um, her recipes. So what are you gonna prepare for us today or show us how to prepare? So today we're gonna to be making an edamame uh, quinoa salad. Um, this is one of my favorite recipes to do because it's really um, colorful. It's got a lot of plant-based protein in it. Um, and it's, it's pretty tasty. Usually this is one of the recipes that our patients are really happy with. Um, and also, I like it because it gives you, uh, it gives me the opportunity to introduce patients to a grain that they maybe haven't met before, um, which is quinoa. Uh, if you're not familiar with quinoa, it is, uh, it's great because it's actually one of the few um, plant-based sources uh, that is a complete protein, which means that it has uh, all of the amino acids you need contained in one package. Normally, when uh, you're vegetarian, if you're, if you're vegetarian, you might be familiar with this already, um, but uh, normally to get your complete uh, amino acid profile, you usually have to pair like a bean with a grain um, because one will contain like half the set and then the other one contains the other 11. Um, so your body needs to collect all, all 22, I want to say, um, in order to create its own protein with it. So quinoa actually has all 22. Um, I say 22, but don't quote me on that. It's, it's around there. Um, amino acids in one package. So that's great. Uh, edamame, which is just soy. Uh, it's just a fancy name for soybeans. I think it might be a different variety of soybean. Um, is also uh, another complete protein. You are probably familiar with it already if you're a vegetarian um, because that's what we make uh, tofu out of. So in the bowl right now, I've just got some uh, already cooked quinoa. I'm gonna add in my edamame. I love, I love how much fiber and protein we've got in the salad too, because I think that makes it a great option to bring with you um, to a party or a social gathering, though I know we probably aren't 
doing much of that here lately. Um, one of the things I like to preach to my patients is that if you're going to go to a social gathering, um, bring something, bring one thing, uh, bring something healthy, because then you know you have at least one healthy option at that social gathering. I know that personally, um, I'm lactose intolerant, so it will often be the case that I'll get there, get to a party, and all I have is like the cold vegetables without any ranch to eat. So at least if you make your own, um, you'll, you'll have one thing that you can fill up on, so you're at least less tempted to overindulge in all the not so healthy things that are probably lurking at that party. Um, and this one's so pretty and inviting too that your friends will probably join you. So uh, I'm just going to cut my cherry tomatoes in half. And I've got a pretty neat trick for doing so. If you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with this already, you can take your cherry or grape tomatoes and just sandwich them between two plates or uh, plastic lids as I'm doing here. One thing I'll say is if you don't have enough cherry tomatoes to fill that whole space, make sure you scooch them together um, so that the pressure of the knife will keep them all um, contained. They won't slide around. But you just take them and sandwich them between uh, two plates or lids and take a long serrated knife, like a bread knife, and just run that knife right through them. And just like that, you have a whole plate of cherry tomatoes that have been cut in half without having to go and do every individual one uh, by hand. So that's a real nice time-saving trick. Too. So now we've got our tomatoes in there. We just need to add some blueberries. All of them. And as you can see, like we've already got a pretty colorful bowl, bowl going. The lighting may not be ideal, but um, next we are going to slice up some green onion and get that into our bowl as well. You could do a different onion if you didn't have green onion on hand, um, and that would be fine. I do think it looks a little nicer with the green onion, but it's not absolutely necessary. If you wanted to add even more color in here, you could throw in uh, a, maybe a yellow bell pepper. That would add even more color to our bowl. Oh shoot, I missed one. Whoops. So next, I need some fresh basil. Oh boy. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're going to chiffonade uh, our basil, which if you're not familiar, the term just means uh, ribbons in uh, French. but all you really have to do is take, you take your biggest leaf and you're gonna use that on the outside. And then you want to layer in all the smaller leaves into uh, the larger one. They don't need to be perfectly in order, just so long as the biggest leaf is on the outside. That's the most important part. This is a great way to use up some fresh basil. If you have fresh basil in your garden, you probably have more than you know what to do with. 
So this is a great recipe for that. So once you have um, them all layered up, you just want to take it and uh, roll it into a little log like this, and then run your knife through it. And it's just gonna make these thin little ribbons of uh, basil. You don't need quite this much. You do that much, it's gonna go in there. All right, let's take a seat. So next we need some lemon zest. If you don't have one of these tools, I highly recommend getting them. There's a lot of really good uh, citrus flavor in the outside um, of the fruit. Um, this goes for oranges, uh, grapefruit, any, any kind of citrus uh, that you might use the juice for, you should really also use that zest as well because it contains a really concentrated uh, form of the flavor uh, without the acidity that comes in the juice. And this microplane is probably the best way to get that off of there. If you want a, a neat trick for uh, getting all of the zest off of your lemon or orange or whatever, um, if you go around the edges in just a circular pattern, uh, get both of those edges, you then just have this part in the middle that hasn't been zested. You can go over that just the once and get all the zest without having to go over it multiple times. Um, if you're doing just like a little spot at a time, sometimes you can go a little farther into that white pith uh, that isn't, uh, that's pretty bitter. So if you do it, this technique, you can avoid that. I bet that smells amazing. It does. It smells, it smells pretty good for sure. Chef Nicole, I have a new thing that I've been doing. I've been cooking onions, I mean, cooking lemons, and then um, I, once they're cooked, I just slice them real thin and put them in whatever dish I'm cooking. Oh, yeah. That's They're so great. I flavorful. Love, essentially, you're making caramelized onions, and caramelized onions are delicious, <laughs> in my opinion. That's right. <laughs> All right, so I definitely recommend using fresh citrus over uh, just the already juiced stuff, but the already juiced stuff will work in a pinch. Um, it's just nice to have the fresh citrus so that you can get that zest off there. So then we're gonna add just a tablespoon of apple juice concentrate. Um, apple juice concentrate is something you can find in the freezer section just with uh, all the other constant juice concentrates. If you've ever bought like orange juice from concentrate in the freezer section, it's essentially the same thing. It's something used a lot in uh, Pritikin recipes. Personally, I prefer not to do it because I just, it's still sugar. Um, so I don't use it very often, but it is, it, I will say it is nice in this recipe because it just kind of balances out um, the acidity in the lemon juice and adds a little sweetness. I just would caution you not to overdo it, especially if you're diabetic. Um, it's still real sugar, so don't go crazy with it. 
there really are very few things that are like truly bad for your health. It's more the frequency that you're having them that's going to take a toll on your health. The occasional sidestep from your healthy diet to have something that you just really wanted to indulge in um, isn't going to ruin your health. Indulging every night in that bad habit, that, that will get you in trouble. So just keep that in mind. It's all about moderation, I guess, is the, the moral of that. <laughs> um all right that's it super easy um you can see right here very very colorful i love this let me see if i have like a clear bowl that i can put it in so you can see how nice it looks i will just do i think you need a clear bowl that you can put it in and then mail it to el paso where i live oh gotcha <laughs> I'm sure you've made this enough times where you've added different little additions to it. I was just thinking how it almost would look with uh, some feta or something if you were. Oh yeah, you definitely you know. could do that. We don't tend to use a lot of cheese, uh, cheese yeah. in our recipes just because uh, there's still you know, there's some saturated fat there. Most cheeses yeah. have a fair amount of sodium. Mm -hmm. uh, especially feta is real salty, yeah. Especially feta, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's also the cholesterol, of course. That being said, feta does have some probiotics. So like there are, there are benefits to having, um, I really think there are benefits to having foods like that. Um, just in moderation um, mm -hmm. so that we can enjoy some of those nutrients that are kind of hard to find like probiotics it you're you're pretty much just looking at yogurt sauerkraut and uh like fermented foods that tend to be salty so it's it's hard right. to find something uh that meets our sodium requirements so that's why i say just like if you want to have it just in moderation all right so you can see Maybe you can see, yeah. Yeah, you can see how it's really pretty. It's really pretty. Uh, I love bringing that one to to get togethers because it, it just looks really inviting. Mm -hmm. um, and I like I like introducing patients to the diet with this recipe too because mm -hmm. it's it's easier to sell them <laughs> um, right. when it really looks tasty. So so today uh, I used quinoa, which I talked a little bit about. Um, but I also want to briefly touch on uh, the benefits of, of trying different grains. Um, this is something personally I didn't uh, realize until I was doing some personal uh, research, but apparently there are different kinds of fibers, more so than just uh, insoluble, insoluble, but there are actual, like the, the fiber in oatmeal uh, and the fiber in brown uh, rice can be completely different. And it turns out that uh, if you're familiar, hopefully you're familiar with the concept of probiotics, but if you're familiar with that, um, then you might have heard of prebiotics, um, but prebiotics are, are pretty much fibers that feed those good bacteria. So if you've gone through the trouble of uh, buying those expensive probiotic supplements to try and regulate your uh, your good bacteria, um, then it's a good idea to also uh, go above and beyond to to feed those bacteria and keep them alive, so you don't run into the same issue of those things falling out of balance. So, and the best way you can do that is by mixing things up, changing, like having different um, grains that maybe you haven't tried before different uh, vegetables have different fiber in them. And if you are eating a very diverse um, range of vegetables, uh, you can keep that good bacteria alive um, a lot better or a lot more easily. Uh, so I have just some examples here of different options. 
Um, obviously, I think brown rice is the one that we're most familiar with because it's Arkansas and we grow uh, rice here. Um, and it's a great option. Uh, of course, there's uh, three grams of fiber in a quarter cup serving of brown rice. Um, some that you might not be familiar with, uh, probably the quinoa you may not have heard of before. Uh, there are four grams of fiber in it for that same quarter cup. Um, we've got uh, farro. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of farro, but it is actually just a wheat grain. I didn't realize this, but it's a wheat grain. Um, it's got about six grams of fiber per quarter cup. So that's even higher than the other ones. Um, couscous, this is whole wheat couscous. I found this at Trader Joe's. If you haven't been to Trader Joe's, like it's not a sponsor, but um, if you haven't been to Trader Joe's, they have a lot of cool, like healthy items that I haven't found elsewhere. Um, I want to say like the best um, peanut butter that I've, I've found that the only ingredient is dry roasted nuts. They don't have any sugar, any oil. I found at Trader Joe's like pretty affordably, uh, pretty af at a, an affordable price. You get what I mean. um, where normally you would have to buy like the expensive organic brand to have it not have all the bad stuff in there. Um, so definitely if you haven't, you haven't checked it out. Uh, it's worth doing so. And they're, they're really taking the whole social distancing uh, thing seriously. Um, they'll make you wait in line to go in just to make sure that everyone uh, has enough space. So it's, it's safe. Um, but yeah, so this uh, whole wheat couscous has seven grams of fiber. I mean, there's eight grams of protein. All of these have a good amount of protein in them as well. Um, you may have also heard of chia seeds uh, and flaxseed meal. I like to, uh, whenever I'm having oatmeal or if you're having a smoothie, just include a little bit of that um, in there just to get a little extra fiber that way. Those also are rich in omega-3s, uh, which is good. Um, even like the 10 minute faro, which is far cooked, so it doesn't have as much fiber. Like, even that has two grams of fiber, so that's still pretty good. Um, I would encourage y'all to just be a little adventurous and try some more grains. You could make this same salad with any one of these. You can make it with the couscous. Um, obviously, you just have to cook them beforehand, but the two cups of any of these grains um, would work. Um, yeah. yeah. Any questions? I have a question about gluten. Are there, yes. are, are, is gluten something that's in all those grains or are there some of those, like is, no. is, is quinoa, does quinoa have gluten? Quinoa is gluten-free. I know that some, uh, some products are more likely to have gluten because they're processed in plants that also process wheat. Barley uh -huh. is a, a big culprit uh, mm -hmm. of that. Um, barley's another one. I don't know if I mentioned it, but barley's another one that's pretty pretty good. There's five grams in that. Um, barley usually does contain gluten, or uh, it has it has to say gluten free for it to right. not yeah for you to have that guarantee. Uh, farro and couscous, since they are wheat um products probably also contain, contain gluten couscous definitely because this is a pasta essentially right. um i don't know uh i don't know how much gluten uh you actually would find in grains in like the whole grains uh, my understanding is that at least my understanding my I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but my background is actually in pastry. Um, so this was a very, uh, very big uh, change from what I was classically trained in. But like uh, when I studied breads, we talked about gluten and in order to uh, form gluten for like a proper baguette, uh, you have to work that gluten. So right. 
the amount of gluten contained in something like just the whole grain is probably far different from um, the amount in like a pasta where that has been worked a lot. Right. So it might not, um, it might not be the, the end mm -hmm. of the world if you got a little bit of gluten in one of those other options. But definitely if, if you have a sensitivity, look for it to say gluten-free. Mm -hmm. Right. I have a quick question. Would you say any of these grains would be good to try in this recipe? Because I remember as a child, like any hot cereal my mom made, whether it was malt oatmeal or cream of wheat or oatmeal, it was always fixed to the same way with sugar and butter and maybe a dash of milk. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, could you take any of those grains and expect the same kind of result in this salad or I mean, are there some that just wouldn't? Obviously, they're going to vary because they have different sizes and shapes. So like the texture might be a little different, but you could essentially make this a farro salad just by swapping that quinoa for farro um, or couscous. It's all going, it's going to serve the same function in the salad, though the um, end product will obviously be different just um, based on the different texture. It's kind of just like, uh, okay. just so like I could try uh, with, it this like, week with and stuff. Yeah, I could try um, it this week with quinoa and a couple of weeks by Faro and try it with that and see which grain I like better. It's just a good way yeah. to maybe explore these grains. Yeah, you can make cold salads like this with cooked with any cooked grain. Uh, and you could swap out these ingredients um, as you like. You don't have to do the three that we did. You could be bell, you could like take it a Tex-Mex route and um, you know, maybe put some chili powder and cumin in there and do black beans instead of an amame and maybe mm -hmm. tomatoes and bell peppers and corn. And then you'd have like a nice Tex-Mex uh, salad. Um, okay, now you're getting a little wild for me. I've got to read a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, you want to give recipes anything? for all of those, that's awesome. Did yeah. you add any oil or, or not? I can't remember. Did you add olive oil or any kind I of oil? I did not add olive oil. Okay. You definitely could um, if you wanted to do a little bit of olive oil. Um, I tend not to uh, include oil in most of my recipes because the, the Pritikin diet is pretty limited on how much oil they're allowed to have. So mm -hmm. generally, like, I think they're allowed maybe two tablespoons of oil per day. Okay. And the way I see it, it's up to them. If they want to include that in breakfast, if they want to, you know, put a little bit in each meal each day, um, then that's fine. If they want to completely omit it, then that's also fine. Um, usually if weight loss is a goal, then you don't really want to do too much uh, in the way of fat because it's pretty calorie dense. <laughs> I can say from experience that um, so a couple of years back, I went vegan for a while and I <laughs> ended up quitting because I was gaining weight, but it's because I, I wasn't moderate. I wasn't looking at how many calories I was eating. I was just like, well, I'm eating vegan. And I just ate vegetables and rice and beans. And I was eating until I was satisfied. Um, but I was also adding a lot of olive oil to things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did the math uh, one day and I was like, oh, I'm eating like 150% of the calories that I normally eat. No wonder right. I'm gaining weight. Yeah. So just like keep that in mind. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. You just want to okay. be. Cautious. I know from experience that Oreo cookies are vegan. So, oh yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> very easy to be like, well, I'm eating. I mean, I'm following the guidelines. <laughs> Why am I eating weight? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody so, has anybody tried a recipe? I know we've got a lot of good cooks in the room. Does anybody try a recipe that's similar or have an addition or something that they have done that's like this one? I like the Tex-Mex version. I think that's kind of fun. Yeah. Maybe some lime yeah. juice instead yeah, of lemon. Yeah, lime juice instead. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like, if you follow these ratios, you can swap out the ingredients as you like and make it your own. 
One of my one of my favorite salads is the meditate salad from the pantry, and it's roasted bell peppers, um, chickpeas, um, quinoa, uh, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And no cucumbers. French. I mean, it's just a real fresh lemon vinaigrette dressing. Yeah, salad. that sounds very awesome. Mediterranean. Yes. Yeah, yes. Cucumber yeah. cucumbers sound good in that one too. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that definitely would be, it, essentially it's the same thing. We've got the grain, we've got the beans and you know, whatever, mix and match whatever vegetables you want in there and then you're dressing and you're essentially and making course, the same salad. Yeah, and I'll either get it with shrimp or with salmon and there's your protein and I mean, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many cooking demonstrations have you done today, chef? <laughs> this is my sixth one today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said last week. We must be on your schedule. Do you have another? Yeah. Are, are you done? Yeah, are you... No, this is it. This is this it. Is it. Uh, okay. Mondays, we do the five cooking demonstrations. Uh, Tuesdays, we actually have the sixth demonstration where there's a three o'clock. Um, but since we don't have that one today, I just put y'all in here. Okay. So you're going to clean up, go home, and have a margarita. <laughs> I love sugar. No, today hasn't been that trying. <laughs> okay. Good deal. Last, last week, I, or the last time we did this one, I definitely was like, oh, <laughs> but uh, a we, little more defeated. But today. Right. I'm we can hear and see you very well today. And we're so glad that y'all were a, a part of of Life Quest Summer. That's a you've provided us two very fresh and healthy recipes for Life Questers. And these recipes, y'all, will be on the website um, under Life Quest of Arkansas. So Chef Nicole's recipes are under Monday when her class is at three o'clock. So look for that. I really, really appreciate you and your time and expertise. Now you have to clean up the kitchen. Sorry, we would have yeah, loved to no, help. It's fine. <laughs> if I could taste it's some of that, I'd love to help. But um, I wish and, I wish y'all could try it. Maybe next year. I'll look Once for all this COVID stuff passes. Yeah, we'll have to come see you in person. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Go yes. ahead, Jody. When does do the phase three people get to start coming back in and coming <laughs> to the classes yeah. and things? Uh, we don't actually have a timeline on that right now. Um, we had we had planned on uh, on it happening soon, but with things Who not yeah. not really getting uh, things haven't gotten better at the rate we were hoping. Uh, so we just um, mixed that Put it on the time being. Okay, um, that's that's wise probably. So I yeah. think they'll probably contact you though when when that is lifted. And you're okay. able to come back because we right. we want to have you. Know, we we'd love to have more faces in here, um, but we also want to make sure that it's safe. Sure. Okay. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. We do too. We're in the same boat. We feel it. We yeah. miss ever seeing everybody. So I'm so glad we've had such good participation in these Zoom classes, and we want we'd love to have you back too. So we'll we'll chat oh. with you again. All right. Thank you. Well, thank right, you, everybody. For having me. Thank you. Thank Our you, Chef Nicole. Now Thank I'm very you. hungry and I'm going to go eat. Bye-bye, <laughs> yeah. everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.